Welcome to week four, in which we discuss voluntarism, structuralism, and functionalism, all important movements in the history of psychology. Let's start with voluntarism and structuralism. And here's a timeline to start us off on part one of today's lesson. Please pause as needed for review. Voluntarism was founded by Wilhelm Wundt and was based on the work of Ernst Weber and Gustav Fechner. The focus was on studying immediate conscious experiences and identifying psychological laws such as choice and attention that ruled and governed changing conscious, conscious experiences. Voluntarism also emphasized here and now experiences. Ernst Weber was a German anatomist and physiologist who introduced the concept of just noticeable difference, or the smallest difference perceivable between two similar stimuli. In turn, he developed Weber's law, a terminal threshold for all senses, or the maximum stimulus beyond which no further sensation could be registered. Gustav Fechner developed an equation that expressed Weber's, Weber's just noticeable difference theory, and the two collaborated to create the Weber-Fechner law, which states that the change in a stimulus that will be just noticeable is a constant ratio of the original stimulus. Wilhelm Wundt was the founder of voluntarism and an important early pioneer in the field of psychology. He was a German physiologist and psychologist and established the first psychology lab in 1879 at the Uni University of Leipzig where he launched psychology as an independent discipline. His seminal text of 1910 Principles of Physiological Psychology successfully combined the fields of physiology with psychology. Wundt studied consciousness and des described this phenomenon in terms of sensations and affect. He defined sensations as experiences that result from a stimulus and affect as feelings or experiences that accompany sensations and are perceived more generally than sensations. Oswald Kulpe offered an alternative to Wundt's approach. Called imageless thought, he believed that some thoughts could be imageless in the absence of sensation, feeling, or image. The ability to form a mental image, according to Kulpe, was different than remembering or recognizing something. In other words, we can recognize someone but are unable to form a mental image of the person from memory alone. Next, Franz Brentano developed ACT psychology not to be confused with ACT or acceptance and commitment therapy. ACT psychology is the systematic study of the mental acts of consciousness of which there are three key components. Recalling or remembering an object, judging, which is affirmation or denial of the object, and feeling or formation of an attitude regarding the object. Brentano's brand of psychology spawned Gestalt psychology, psychoanalysis, and perhaps you can think of even newer movements and theoretical models inspired by his work. Structuralism attempted to improve on voluntarism with rigorous research. Through highly controlled laboratory studies, structuralism sought to analyze the adult mind defined as the sum total of experiences from birth to the present in terms of the simplest definable, definable components. The focus was on introspection or the examination of one's own mental and emotional processes. Edward Titchener, the principal architect of structuralism, initially brought Wundt's brand of voluntarism to the U.S. But over time, he developed structuralism using observation and introspection to search for the elements of consciousness, including feelings, sensations, and ideas or images. Titchener also created the core context theory of meaning, which stated that the context in which sensation is experienced determines the meaning of the sensation. 
For example, a scent may bring up images of a rose, elucidating a specific meaning to the individual. Now, at the beginning of the 20th century, there was a desire to know more about the functional capacities of humans and animals. Structuralism had piqued interest in psychology, both, both practically and in terms of application, but it was no longer relevant because it excluded large sections of the population and was considered too laboratory-based. There was a need for a broader and more applied use of psychology, and this came with psychology's next important movement, functionalism. Here's a timeline of events and important people who represented the functionalist movement. Functionalism can be thought of as the first truly American school of psychology. It stressed the importance of empirical, rational thought over more experimental trial and error, trial and error philosophies. Functionalism focused on consciousness and capabilities of the mind, which served to mediate between the demands of the environment and the needs and wants of the internal environment of the individual, promoting adaptability. Now, although Charles Darwin was not a psychologist, his work on evolution paved the way for functional psychology, demonstrating that all species evolved by adapting to the changing environment. He allowed human consciousness to be studied scientifically for its adaptive and functional utility. Sir Francis Galton was elitist, racist, and sexist, believing that proper mating could create a race of great people. He also believed that mental characteristics fell along a continuum which is comparable to the bell curve we use in assessment today and he developed the idea of the average man, which represented the beginning of eugenics. Herbert Spencer popularized Darwin's theory of evolution in America. He coined the phrase survival of the fittest and advocated social Darwinism, which focused on the advantages of natural selection. But the most influential of all functionalists, and arguably the most important psychologist from a historical standpoint, was William James. Considered America's first psychologist, he wrote The Principles of Psychology, in which he discussed consciousness as personal, ever-changing, continuous, strongly influencing stability of personality. He believed that consciousness could not be broken down to individual parts like the structuralists believed that would be like putting together a puzzle with no sense of the overall picture. Now, according to James, introspection and the five characters of consciousness represented the best method for studying psychological experiences and mental life. And if we examine these five characters, we see how integral to psychology they are even today. And the James Lang theory of emotion suggests that emotions occur as a result of physiological reactions to events and changes within the body. G. Stanley Hall studied under William James at Harvard and brought Sigmund Freud to the United States in 1909 to do a series of lectures at Clark University. His main area of study was children and adolescents, and his book, Adolescence, was the first text devoted entirely to the development of teenagers. In his work, he highlighted the role of evolutionary theory and genetics and was a supporter of eugenics, but with a twist, which we'll discuss further in class. John Dewey studied under G. Stanley Hall and published the Reflex Arc Concept of Psychology, which became the foundational article on functionalism. He believed in educating all children and became a proponent of progressive education and worked with children to promote functionalist ideas as opposed to drills and memorization. Next, Edward Thorndike developed the law of effect, stating that connections between appropriate external stimulus conditions and pleasurable behaviors are strengthened or stamped in 
whereas the connections between stimuli and non-pleasurable or annoying behaviors are stamped out. Now, contrary to popular belief, Hugo Munsterberg was not a character in a famous television show from the 1960s. However, he did do some important things like popular, popularizing applied psychology for the American public and promoting practical means such as the inclusion of spirituality through his articles in the Atlantic Monthly. Munsterberg is considered a pioneer in industrial and organizational psychology, or I.O., and he stressed the importance of assessing work conditions and psychological conditions of the worker. And finally, Leitner Whitmer founded and coined the term clinical psychology. He is considered an innovator in school psychology, encouraging a team approach to working with children and emphasizing that each child has individual strengths and weaknesses, which aligned him to the beliefs of John Dewey. Now, if Whitmer were alive today, he might even warn against overly long videos in history and systems of psychology courses. So I think it best to end our lesson here. Have a great week, and I'll see you in class.